Hi everybody, this is Tanya. I was thinking tonight, I was doing some research. Uh, I get bored easy and I get fascinated by things. And I was thinking, why do people get trapped in relationships or cults and they can't get out? I have no idea why at this point I had become fascinated with this topic. So I decided to start looking at it. And I started researching cults and, and why people get hooked in. And I started seeing similarities to parts of my life. No, I haven't been in a cult. But I have had a long-standing friendship. The person is now deceased, but I will not give a name that I felt was a true friend. In fact, I lived with this person for 18 years. And they're, they passed away. And it was very difficult for me when she passed away. She was my best friend. But I had been thinking about that and the similarities that I saw and I started looking up emotional abuse. A lot of people know about physical abuse and there are a lot of outward signs of physical abuse. You can hide those, but you can also hide being emotionally abused. And it doesn't have to be a boyfriend doing it or a husband or even your folks. It can be your best friend. I couldn't have a radio I wanted a radio in my room to listen to music. I love music. I think music is part of the way God and I communicate. But she didn't want me having a radio in my room and it led to a huge argument. When we first moved in together, we liked two distinctly different types of music. In fact, I hadn't heard much of her music. I liked contemporary Christian music and gospel. I did like some 80s rock and some early 90s stuff and we moved in together, I think it was 95. And I hadn't listened to some of the bands that she had listened to and some of them are now some of my favorites. But I had to start listening to my music through headphones right after we moved in. Together. And we moved in together because of my health. I had had a seizure in the shower when I was living alone. I hit my head when I fell in the handicapped shower and she found me in the shower unconscious. And the doctors decided it wasn't too safe for me to be living alone right then. And we were both going to college so we saw each other every day anyway because she was my ride to school. And so we decided to move out together. And looking back, there was, it was a toxic friendship. She bought, she would, we couldn't pay the electric bill yet. She would go out and buy Barbies because she liked to collect Barbies. She'd never take them out of the box or anything, but she would collect any one new Barbie or Barbie item that came out and she'd spend my money doing it. And I accepted it. I would fight with her at times, but I grew to accept it. And I didn't see, even after she died 18 years later, that uh, she died of a blood clot in the lung. That, you know, she could get married, boy, date and get married, but I wasn't allowed to date anybody, even when I had somebody I was interested in. I had to ask permission about what clothes to wear. I couldn't buy my own clothes. We, we, she had me convinced we shared the closet, the clothes, because we were both the same size and that because it was cheaper that way. Yet she would go out and buy any tools she wanted and work on cars, which honestly I didn't have an interest in, but I had to be out there the whole time. I didn't know then 
And she's been gone quite a long time now, about 10 years. And thinking about it, thinking how when I would want to move out, she would blame me and say that our friendship was based on lies then. And I would feel guilty and I would never move out. She didn't get a job. I got her a job. And then I did the work. She was supposed to be an in-home caregiver for me. And I got her the job and then I would still take care of things, 90% of it myself. I had no idea how to budget, how to take care of the finances of the household because she didn't think I needed to know because she was there to handle it all. I didn't even know where the checkbook was when she died. Yet she was able to get married and move her boyfriend in before they even got married to our house so that we lost the HUD because she wanted to have a boyfriend and a husband. And it's very difficult for me to admit this. I got mad tonight. For the first time in 10 years, I got mad tonight. I had a picture that was professionally taken because I paid for it. That I had put in a frame and had framed up in my new apartment, which I've only been out on my own here now for, I'd say since September maybe in late August, September. I took it out of the frame tonight for the first time and I put it through the shredder because I don't deserve that. And I'm not saying this for pity. I want y'all to understand there's more types of abuse out there. Just because someone doesn't physically hit you doesn't mean it's okay what they do. They shouldn't demean you. They shouldn't tell you you can't wear something or can't be friends with somebody. They shouldn't convince you you can't go to school or you can't work. They should support you. We deserve to be supported of each other. And the only way to heal from it is to get out and get mad and accept it. She's been dead for 10 years. We lived together for almost 18 years. It took me a long time to accept it and I finally have. And now I can heal from it. And I hope by telling my story, someone out there realizes they deserve to be treated better than they are. It didn't happen because I have cerebral palsy. And it didn't happen because I let it happen. You don't let someone abuse you. It can happen and it's very difficult to get your mind around. You deserve to be treated better than that. Trust me, I'm still doing it. It's hard for me to accept hugs from people I don't know. I used to hide until tonight around, oh, I've got depression or, oh, I've got PTSD. I don't need to be afraid of a simple hug anymore. Not because someone abused me, but because I was afraid. Was it okay if I hug that person or is she going to get mad at me? She was supposed to be my best friend. I asked her one time when I got mad at her because I, I knew... She didn't treat me right, but I never called it abuse. And I said, why do you do this? Why can't I have a radio in my room? Why don't I have a bed? Why am I sleeping on the floor? I was convinced back then that it was my idea to get rid of my bed. My idea to sleep on the floor. Looking back, no. It wasn't my idea. It was control. 
And I'm sorry about my language here, folks, but I'll be damned if anybody controls me anymore. I don't deserve it. God doesn't want it for us. We need to support each other. And yeah, we can't hug right now because of COVID. I know that. I'm talking in general. You shouldn't even be afraid to talk to someone on the phone and, and say that they're your friend because someone who's been dead for 10 years would have objected. It's time for me to get over it. And I hope for those of you who see similarities in my story, get help, get out. It took her dying for me to get released from that. In fact, a friend of ours moved in named David. He was being mistreated by his family. And I remember telling him, oh my God, I'm so sorry you're here with me going through this now. I shouldn't have felt that way. I should have felt home safe you should be able to come into your own home and blare whatever music you want to blare and dance around in your underwear if that's what you want to do and feel safe and accepted doing it we don't need to abuse each other and what is abuse but hurting someone else even if you don't know them and you tell a, an off-color joke about them or you don't think they can hear you and you make a comment about how they're dressed or how big they are oh she shouldn't wear that just because they don't make just because they make it in her size don't mean she should wear it just because you can say it doesn't mean she can't hear you and if they're deaf they can read your lips we can hurt each other without knowing each other with just a simple word or phrase. How about we start with, I'm sorry. I love you. We're all human beings and we all go through shit. There isn't any one human alive that hasn't gone through something. So how about we support each other in everything we go through and stop with all the rest of the bull. It won't happen. Not on a group scale. The whole world's not going to have world peace. But it can happen one person at a time. And if you're somebody who's controlling somebody you know. And say, well, I didn't realize I was doing it. That shirt just doesn't look good on her. That's why I doesn't want to wear it. I don't want her to wear it. Or I tell her not to eat because I'm trying to help her. Don't help like that. Get yourself help so that you know how to best help another person. I've got people I can talk to. I write. And now I'm doing video blogs. Not a lot on serious topics. Only once in a while. We got to help each other, folks. We got to quit abusing each other. You got a picture of someone who's abusing you? Shred it. It'll make you feel quite, quite vindicated. At least it did for me. And I'm going to keep shredding. I'm going to shred the self-doubt. I'm going to shred the lack of belief of me in my own self. I'm an amazing human being. How do I know that? God created me. He doesn't make mistakes. We do. We mess things up. But he still loves me regardless. I'm not going to turn my back on that. Because wouldn't then I be the abuser? And if you are abused, don't do it to somebody else. Because my friend, you know how it feels, whether you realize it, recognize it, and accept it or not. 
and don't allow our children to do it either. You can have all the money in the world and still be the poorest soul on the planet. Because who are your real friends? The ones that hold you up. I call those people my soul tribe. They're not people that are blood. But they're people that even if I don't see them for years, I know they'll support me and hold me up if I need it. That's my family. Because loving loveys, your families can abuse you too. Maybe not with a hit or a punch, but words can break a person just like a fist can break a bone. And you can't take the words back. You can say, I'm sorry, but that doesn't wipe them from the memory. Our minds are a computer. And we remember everything, whether we consciously recognize that memory or not. So let's support each other not abuse each other and if you know someone who's going through this you help them and if they don't want your help then you pray or you call the cops on their behalf you do what you have to to help and support them because one day they're going to look back on that and go my god they were right thank god they were right they helped me even when i didn't want the help because sometimes the hand that's helping us will get bitten. Doesn't make it right. But it doesn't mean you need to stop helping it either. Let's not abuse each other. And let's get through it. Because there isn't anyone on the planet that hasn't gone through something. God bless.